This is Mr. Toops. I'm so glad you're here. We're going to go start going through your Algebra 1 note packet. The packets you get will be for each test, okay? So we'll generate every time we take a test, you'll get another packet. <clears throat> this kind of helps it organize. This is your notes, okay? So this is the first day of notes. We're going to do page 2 and 3 in your notes. So make sure you put your name on your packet. Make sure you put your name on your packet, okay? And don't lose it. If you're face-to-face, -face, don't lose it. Obviously, at your home, don't worry about it. If you don't have a printer at home, you're going to have to write this on your own paper, okay? So we'll go through the first part. Okay, so the first blanks, okay, to solve an equation. Using inverse operations to do an operation to get the variable alone, okay? <clears throat> a symbol, usually a letter that is unknown, that's going to be a variable. Is a number with a fixed value that's going to be a constant okay a numerical or constant quantity placed before multiplying the variable in an algebraic expression that's going to be a coefficient okay so the 14 the 7 the negative 7 actually the positive 10 and the negative 2 are all coefficients here what a blast okay now the end this year is it's going to be sixth grade integers. If you can do sixth grade integers, you got this, okay? So remember also you have a calculator. Can't do the whole thing in a calculator. You cannot use insolve. Okay? Insolve won't be allowed this year, okay? So when you do try to go to insolve, it will not work on the calculator. So make sure you're not using that. Okay, this right here is some basic rules. <clears throat> okay, try to think of this as a sixth grade math. I got four negatives and I got six negatives, don't I? What do I have more of, fours or sixes? I got more sixes, don't I? Since I have more sixes, this negative is going to drop. Now then, these are negative and these are negative. How many negatives would I have? I would not subtract these, would I? So I'm going to add them and get 10. Try to get the sign first and the number. Sign, number, sign, number. If you get the sign first, you're going to do good, okay? Okay, let's go to this one. These have decimals. It's going to be okay. We have 4.5 negatives and we got 11.65 positives. So we have more positives than negatives, don't we? So the plus is going to drop. So find the largest quantity and drop it, okay? Do you have more positives or do you have more negatives? Now then on this one, the signs are different, so I'm going to subtract. You can use a calculator if you want. I don't have two, so 417, right? So 7 and 14 hundredths, okay, would be that answer. And technically, you don't have to put the plus, do you? Now then, if you were to punch that in on the calculator, you would get 7.14. On the test, we would assume you would do that on the calculator. Okay, let's go to another one. Let's subtract a fraction, okay? It's going back to fifth grade when you added subtractive fractions. My denominators are 10 and 4. I need to get the LCM done, or the common denominator, the least common multiple. Which denominator is bigger? That's right, 10 is more than 4. So write down 10 over here. Will 4 go into 10? It won't work, will it? So I'm going to put 10 times 2 is 20. I'm going to keep writing multiples of 10 down until 4 goes into it. Will 4 go into 20? Ding, 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 4 works, right? So my common denominator will be 20. So make two fraction bars, put 20 and 20. <clears throat> what do I multiply 10 by to get 20? Over here on the left, I'm going to put a times 2. So 3 times 2 is 6, and 2 times 10 is 20, right? I'm going to have my minus. What do I multiply 4 by to get 20? I'm going to put a little bit times 5, right? 4 times 5 is 20. 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, if I had a lot more time, what we're doing is making the pieces like this would be 3 tenths of a cake, this would be 3 fourths of a cake. The pieces are not the same size, are they? So when we slice them up even more, the pieces become the same size. So that's why you're getting a common denominator, so you're combining the same size pieces. Now that each cake has 20 pieces in it, this cake has 6 and this cake has 15. Now then, what do you have more of, the 6s or the 15s? you got more 15s, don't you? Which is negative. So I'm going to put down a negative and take the small one away from the big one. 
So six away from 15 is nine, and my denominator will stay 20. Oh, 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 oh. these calculators will do fractions, won't they? So technically, you don't have to be able to do that. You can type that into the calculator and work it out. Don't panic if you can't do the fractions. So the calculator will do the work for you. And on the last one, we're going to group these. Two, negative 2 thirds and plus 7 twelfths. What's my biggest denominator? That's right, it's 12. So we're going to put a 12 over here. Well, 3 going to 12. Ding, 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 ding. It works, doesn't it? So I'm going to draw two more fractions. I'm going to make this one negative. And I'm going to put 12 on the bottom. Okay, what do I have to multiply 3 by to get 12? I'm going to put a little bitty times 4. So 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 4 is, that's right, it's 8. And over here, this is just going to drop because the 12 won't change, will it? Now that up here, this cake is cut into thirds. This cake's cut into twelfths. What just happened? Now we have both twelfths, right? Both cakes have 12 pieces. This cake has a negative 8 as a denominator. This cake has a positive 7. So what do you have more of, 8s or 7s? You have more 8s, don't you? Since you have more 8s, you have more negatives. So that negative will drop. Will you add or subtract them? You won't add like different signs, will you? So you'll take the seven positives away from the eight negatives and you'll get one, won't you? And the denominator won't change. So you'll get negative one twelve. Remember, you will have a calculator to do this. So that's gonna be pretty simple with the calculator to work that out. Okay, let's go to the next page. To solve a one-step equation, Isolate the variable by using opposite operations by using inverse operations. A lot of words you could put in there. Okay? So we're going to do the opposite to get the answers. Now then I'm going to show you how to do these with more power, okay? Step one. And this is just one step, so we're not going to do this today. Uh, let's don't write down step one. So step two, write down combine the variables. You won't have this today because there's only going to be one variable. Step three is to combine the constants. And step four is to divide the coefficient. And I will show you how to do those more in detail. Basically, we might have to divide, we're only going to do one of these steps on this page. So it's going to be pretty, pretty simple here. And I'm going to do one on each row and you're going to do the other. So you're not going to have many to do. I'll probably give you some extra problems to do. <coughs> okay, let's start on the first one. This one has more negatives, don't it? So let's go over here. I'm going to show you a trick, okay? This is the way I teach. Put a bar through the equal sign. Now then, you want all of the letters on one side and all of the numbers on the other side. So I have a variable, a constant, and a constant. i got to get these two together, but they're on different sides, aren't they? The letter or variable is on the left. So all of the numbers have to go to the right, okay? So draw an arrow from the four to the negative two. I'm gonna take this negative four and merge it with the negative two arm. To move that negative four across, we have to do the opposite operation. And the opposite of operation is plus four. Draw a bar. So the negative, the fours on the left cancel out and we would get x equals negative two plus four. Which one's more? Do you have more fours or more twos? You got more fours, so the sign's positive and you'll take two away from four and just get a positive two. Okay, so we have fractions down here. So let's go over here to our directions and write the first step, get rid of fractions. I'm gonna show you how to do that, okay? Before I do that, let's do this. You did this in sixth grade. Okay, now remember what this is called. This is a distributed property argument. So we're going to take our constant and we're going to distribute it to the three and the four. I like to imagine this as the bluebell truck. Oh, 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 oh. So if you have a job driving the bluebell truck 
You're going to drive that Bluebell truck to all the stores and drop off the Bluebell ice cream, right? You're going to be distributing Bluebell ice cream. So this is our Bluebell truck, and the numbers inside the parentheses are the stores. So I'm going to take the Bluebell truck, and I'm going to drive it to the three and the four. Then when the Bluebell truck gets there, it's got to multiply. So two times three X is six X, and two times four is eight. That's called the distributive property. You did that in sixth grade, should have repeated it in seventh and eighth. Okay. Remember, I've taught sixth grade all the way to senior, so I know you were taught what and when. Okay, now then we're gonna do the same concept down here. And let's do the question three, because it's hard. Try to think of this here. What is the opposite of divide by four? What is the opposite of divide by four? Okay, the opposite of divide by four is to multiply by four. So to get rid of a fraction, let's write down distribute the denominator to the equation, to the whole equation. This is going to make life easy. Okay? So our denominator is 4. What does it say to do? Distribute it to the whole equation. So this 4 is our blue belt truck. It's going to go to the 3 and the 9. So put a little bitty 4 above the 3 and above the 9. One with me. So I'm taking the denominator and I'm distributing it to every term in the fraction. What's the opposite of divide? It's multiply, right? What is 4 divided by 4? 4 divided by 4 is 1. These are going to cancel out, aren't they? That's why we distribute the denominator to cancel out the denominator. Now then on the left side, I just got negative three y on it. Equals, and what will this be? Four times nine is 36. And the last step, if you look over here, we had to do two steps on this one. The last step is to divide the coefficient, right? Okay, so I'm gonna draw two fraction bars and I'm gonna divide by negative three. The negative three is my coefficient. The negative threes cancel out, just like the fours did, right? And I'm gonna get y equals a positive divided by a negative sixth grade integer, positive divided by a negative is a negative, and what's 36 divided by three? It's right in is 12, so the answer is negative 12. Oh, 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 Okay, let's go over here. What would you distribute on this one? What would you put on top of the b, what would you put on top of these two? That's right, you would put four, wouldn't you? So put a four and a four. These fours are gonna cancel out. I'm gonna let you do the rest on your own. And then let's add some more. Let's do two over three X equals, uh, let me get one that works here, 10. That'll work. Let's do negative three over four X equals, let's do six. Let's add one more. Let's do negative two over five X equals negative, and let's do four. Okay, so see if you can get these three also. You're gonna do the same thing you did on this one, okay? Same process, very simple stuff. And lastly, let's do these. This is a little bit harder. Now then, remember, the X does not have to be on the left or the right, okay? The X could be anywhere. So on this problem here, my X is on the right, so I need all the numbers on the left. So if I were to draw my bar, I gotta move across the 5.3 dome, but I'm multiplying. So this is my coefficient in it. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 5.3. Now then, most of y'all may not be able to do this in your brain. That's why you have a calculator. You would punch in 15.9 divided by 5.3, and the answer, yes, good job. The answer is three. The 5.3 is over here. Okay, it's a lot to one, one thing. So X equals three. And just do this one right here. So this gives you five problems to do, okay? So you'll work on those, get that done, and remember to always believe, and you are awesome.